it was a it was a good performance against a good Hartford team. They got experienced guards. Um, they're they're better than that score indicated. Um, we saw them play UConn really well, and we watched film of them last year. Could have won their conference tournament. Um, so we feel good about it. It was good to get the guys in the bench, and um, I, I'm sure those guys. I've been doing media, so I haven't met with the team yet. So I'm sure they're just praying that I don't call them back tonight and say we're staying for another two days. They loved it. Everything was great here. The Zell group was great. Mohegan's son was great, but <laughs> they want to go home. I think they want to go home. So it was, uh, it was, it was a good finish to a, a great trip. Joe, go ahead. Uh, Jay, I know you wanted to get the bench some, some time. Uh, what did you think of the performance, especially of, of Eric uh, coming in there and uh, 20 minutes, 14, 10 and three. Yeah, I was, I was really proud of those guys. And, um, specifically proud of you know, Jermaine Samuels and Colin and Jeremiah Robinson, who just came in the game to defend and, and set everybody up. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys that, that could go into a game and, and say they want to get their points after a tough game against Virginia Tech, and they just did all the little things and, and allowed those guys to play well. You know, Jeremiah, I can't believe he only had three assists. I mean, he was feeding Eric all night, and um, and then – Eric was great. Brandon Slater was great. And, uh, and and it was good to get those guys, those minutes. Cole Swatter was good, too. And what was it like for Eric, you know, playing against guys he didn't know uh, and then having such a good game tonight in extended time? That's a great experience for, for him. As, as I said to you, you know, a number of times, I love this kid. I, I think he's going to be really good. Um, and, and the reason I can say I love him like that and not worry about is – his head blowing up as he's very intelligent, very humble. He's got great parents. They know he's got work to do, his conditioning, and he's working at it. You know, he, he, um, be, besides his points, I mean, he played with great intensity for 20 minutes. Um, he got a little tired at one stretch, but that, that's okay. Um, I, I was really proud of him. Thank you. Josh, you're unmuted. Hey, Jay. Um, okay. Even though, you know, obviously, you know, you want to give credit to Hartford. They're, they're not a Big East program, but for guys like Eric, like Brandon, how hopeful are you that just having a game like they had, you know, then when you, if you're, if they're not able to play quite as many minutes against a Texas or moving forward that then when they do get those minutes, they're able to sort of channel what they had today. Yeah, any game time you, you get is valuable. That's why we decided to stay here. I mean, we, you know, we could have gone home. We, we would be practicing these things that, that Brandon did tonight and that Eric did tonight, but that it doesn't count until you do it in a game. And that's why this was so valuable. Um, and, and I hope they are playing against Texas. You know, we, we need them to. And that's why we need them to get these minutes. Does it give you more confidence that, you know, you can, you know, if a guy makes a mistake that you can count on him that, all right, I can leave him in to play through it this time, you know, Definitely. having gotten a little. Definitely. More I, you know, belt. Coaches have their weaknesses like players have their weaknesses. And uh, one of my weaknesses is, is relying on our veterans. Like I trust our veterans implicitly, sometimes too much. But that's, you know, I need to get these guys more time and trust them more. And, and they proved it tonight. And they definitely earned our trust tonight. Terry, you're unmuted. You know, Jay, you, you went to call early, you went to the bench early. Was that a concerted effort on your part, a conscious effort that, to get those guys in early? Yeah, you know, especially Jermaine and uh, Colin and um, uh, Jeremiah, who, who played a lot of minutes. And, and so we, we want to just keep those guys fresh and start a rotation early. Mike Jensen, you're unmuted. Mike, are you there? Yeah, sorry. Uh, Jay, how far back do you go with Johnny Gal? And, and I wasn't on the Zoom yesterday. Did did you think of Hey Hartford, or or did the organizers think of it? No, the uh, the Gazelle Group came to us after our Virginia Tech game and said, you know, they kind of knew that St. Joe wasn't going to be able to play, and um, and so they said, if you know, if you want a game, we'll try to 
get you another game. And, and I said, yeah, that'd be great. Cause we were originally trying to get, we were trying to get St. Joe up here. We were going to play St. St. Joe on Wednesday up here and play somebody on Monday. So they right. were kind of working on that already. And we were actually trying to help St. Joe get a game up here Monday so they could get up here. Cause like, you know, Billy and, and I both said like this, we know this is safe, you know? So, um, then they came to us with uh, Hartford, so it, was, it wasn't a it wasn't a Philly thing, Mike. They they set it up. Got you. How far back do you go with Johnny Gal? Uh, everybody everybody goes everybody goes back far with Johnny Gal. I honestly so long I, I don't remember. You know I I've uh, uh, run into him on early morning walks on the beach in Ocean City. We we walk on the beach and talk basketball together. That might have been. 15 years ago, I don't know, uh, a long time, a long time, but everybody loves Johnny Gallo, Phil, you know that. Thanks, Jay. John Marks, you're unmuted. <clears throat> yeah, Jay, was there a concerted effort on your part to, to shoot more threes tonight or did just was that the way their defense evolved and because you hadn't been getting as many in the other games and defensively, were you happy with the way you defended threes? Yeah. yeah. To your first question, John, you know, team teams had, um, you know, been playing us man to man and taking away the threes. Boston uh, College played us some zone and, and we just weren't making them. And when when they opened up in a zone, it, it, it gave us threes. Now, you know, every coach knows you give that a shot, you play zone. If the other team's not making threes, you stay in there. And, and fortunately, we were making them. You know, when you play against the zone, those first few threes, you're, you're praying they go in. Um, so then once they started going, you know, it, it gets, it gets everybody going. And, uh, and I, I do think we did a good job defending threes cause they're, they're really good. They're, they're really good at finding people for threes. And, 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 um, I thought UConn did a good job against them too, defending their threes. Um, so I, I was pleased with that. Well, so to you, uh, this whole week and all, what have you learned that you didn't necessarily know about your team and about yourself going through what's been happening this week? I would say mostly, John, just um, a great admiration for the NBA guys that, that went through this bubble for months. And everything was perfect here. The rooms, the, the security, the food was great. It was run extremely professionally. But, you know, you're, you're inside – you know, from Monday to, to Tuesday, you know, and um, I, 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 you know, I just really learned the, the, the and mental impact that has on young, on young guys, especially when they thought they were going to leave twice, you know, um, and, and I, they're mentally strong. I, I'm, I'm really proud of them. And I really, I would not push them another game. I, if we got offered another game, I wouldn't go. They've handled everything great. Um, I, I think they've, they need a, a mental break. I think physically they're good. We played four games in seven days. I thought they handled that well. We're in good shape. It just um, the mental aspect of, you know, being in, in a bubble for this long is is impactful. And I hope if we get a chance to go to the NSA tournament, this is going to have been a great experience for us. Okay, hey, Dan, the last question for Coach is yours. Oh, good, because it's a good one. Jay. <laughs> If you say belt. so yourself, Danny, Mr. Humble and Hungry. Are you out of clothes or a fashion statement with the white belt? <laughs> yeah, it might have been it, it might have been a little overdone. I just figured the white sneaks. I actually had it. We had white sneaks on the other night. I had the belt as I had a, uh, a, a top over it. So I don't know. I was I was thinking white belt, white shoes, past past Labor Day might might have overdone it a little bit, Danny. How are you feeling without wearing the suits? I mean, is this going to be a year long thing for you? I hope. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope it goes into the future. I, I've, 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 I've long contended. I think this is how we should dress for games. The only reason I wear a suit and I think a lot of us do is just out of respect for the game and out of respect for the great coaches like Nat Holman and, and Frank McGuire and everybody who, that, you know, who started this and dressed that way, but this is really how we should dress. You know, we're, we're, it's, it's sports, you know, we're in a, we're in a game and um, it's not that it's comfortable. It's just, it's, it's sports, how we practice, you know, I, I like it. All right, thanks, man. All right, buddy. Great Thank question. <laughs>